In this video, I'll give a quick introduction to horizon charts and how to read them, some of the benefits and use cases, and then I'll walk through how you can easily create your own horizon chart by using the dashboard on screen as a template and copying over the calculations to your own workbook. Probably the easiest way to understand a horizon chart is to walk through an example. If we start off with this area chart, first thing we're gonna do is split the area chart into a number of slices of an equal height. So you can see there's three slices above the axis and two below, there would be a third one if we had the full range of data here. And we then color the slices based on the values that they represent. So the further they are away from the baseline, the more intensity, the more saturation the color gets. Okay, the next step is to then flip any negative values to be positive. So everything is now above the baseline. We then move the slices down so they sit on top of one another with the most highest valued slice sitting on top of the value below. And the end result after all of those steps that we have the horizon chart that you see on the screen here, and the advantage is that we have all this empty space below and both above the horizon chart, which we can then use to fill in with further data series. And that's exactly what I've done with the horizon chart for these tech stocks where we can see 20 series of data for each of these top 20 NASDAQ stocks. So you're looking at quite a, a large amount of data in a relatively compact space. And that's commonly one of the main advantages of the horizon chart. It does allow you to pack in a lot of data into a compact space to see the trends across many series of data. For example, if we were to compare the horizon chart we have for these 20 stocks to a line chart, with the line chart we can still see the trends, but they just don't stand out as much as they do in the horizon chart. So the focus of this video is to help you create a horizon chart as quickly as possible by reusing the calculations from this workbook. And I'll walk through an example of how to do that in a second, but if you are keen to learn more about how the calculations work and the general approach to how I've made this horizon chart, I have written a blog post that goes through some of those details, and I'll link to that post in the description below. Okay, so this is a new workbook. We've got uh, some new data in here. It's so looking at OECD inflation data. And I've created a line chart for every dimension value that is in the location field uh, within the data. So there's 49 rows in the data. Um, so there's 49 locations. And we're looking at the inflation data from start of 2000 all the way through to February, 2022. So this might be a good use case to bring in a horizon chart because we have many series of data, um, lots of data points in a relatively compact space. Okay, so I'm gonna switch back to my template workbook. Okay, and the first thing I'm gonna do is copy the three views here. So we've got the dashboard, the horizon chart view, and the vision tooltip view. So I'm gonna select all three of those by holding shift and then clicking, right click and copy. And then we go back to the new dashboard with the OECD data, right click and paste. Okay, so when we copy those in, it brings in the, um, the dashboard, work the two worksheets but it also brings in the data source everything is in this workbook now the next step is to copy all of the calculations from the original data source over to the oecd data source so to that we'll just go to any of the views and you see the data source selected is for the template workbook which is the top 20 nasdaq stocks so i'm going to filter down two calculations by clicking on this icon click on calculation and now it's only showing the calculations in that data source so i'll click the first one hold down the shift key click the last one and they're all selected I can right click click on copy and then i want to go over to my new data source which is the oecd data source and then i can come down here right click and paste now you're going to see that they all have these red exclamation mark next to them and that's because they're all dependent on some key fields that are in the original data source which are not in this data source so to resolve that we just need to update these three fields that start with an at symbol so the date the dimension the metric so let's start with the date we'll just right click go to edit so just to drop in our date, which in this case, in our new data source is year month. So I'll just click on that, drag that over. So I get this orange highlighting and then I can let go. And that now replaces that field. Go to the next one. We're going to replace the dimension field now. So right click, edit. This time it's looking for the stock dimension, but in our case, we're going to be using the location. Okay. And to show the field that we want to use here, we just take off this filter. We're looking to calculations because this is not a calculation. So clear that out and now we can see the location field and you see there's no equal sign there. There's actually an underlying field. So I'm going to take the location field, drag and drop that on top of the stock field here and that'll replace that and click OK. And then finally we have the metric field. So just right click again, edit. And this time we're looking for the measure that we want to use. In this case, it's going to be the value measure. And then we click OK. And all of those exclamation marks have now disappeared because the underlying calculations and now looking at fields that are present within the data source. So for example, if I go into this metric normalize and edit that field, you can see that this calculation is referring to the at metric field and that at metric field has been updated to use a field that's in the OECD data source. 
So, so far we haven't updated this chart at all. All we're doing is updating the fields that are present in the new data source. Come back to this data source. Nothing's changed here. It's all the same. The chart's the same. So what we want to do now is change the data source that's used for this chart. Okay. So to change the data source, we just right click on the current data source, which is signified by this blue check, go to replace data source, and then we can click okay, because there's only one other data source that it can pick. And that is the OECD one. Click okay. And you see, it's now updated the chart. We've got all of the new data in place and we just need to make some edits for the formatting. So for example, in this case, I had restricted the axis to only show from the last two years for the stocks, whereas we actually have 20 years of data in the OECD data. So I'm going to right click, edit the axis, and I'll just make it automatic for now. So it brings in all the data and I can close that. You can see we've now got the horizon chart for the full data series, the last 20 years or so. Okay. Now that we've swapped over the fields and the data source, we can now focus on the formatting. Okay, now with the inflation data, we might want to swap the colors around. So with the stock data, the red was generally kind of a warning or negative that the stock was low. Whereas with the inflation data, the, we probably want the red to be representing where the inflation is going higher. So to do that, I'm just going to edit the colors. and I'll just swap these around. The next thing you notice is that um, the values are actually being represented as dollars, which is what we were using in the stock chart, whereas actually here the inflation is percentages. So we need to change the formatting of the, the measure. Okay, so that's now being shown as a percentage in the top of the Vizin tooltip. But you can see on the axis on the chart below, it's still showing as dollars. So we need to edit that as well. So to fix that, we'll head over to the Vizin tooltip sheet. And I'll just change the format of the axis. Okay, now we're also missing our reference line in the Vision tooltip, and that's because the axis for the Vision tooltip has also been fixed. So we just need to unfix that so it shows all of the data. So we go back to our Vision tooltip sheet, and we can either right click and edit the axis, or we can just click on this pin at the top here, and that will reset the axes. Okay, so we've got our reference line back now, okay, and that's showing up now. As you can see, we move across, the reference line is moving to show where we are for that country's inflation rate, which date. So let's go and look at this in the full screen mode, just see what we've got so far. So obviously there's a few more changes to make. I just need to update the title and so on. I'm going to remove this key because this is the custom key that was created for the NASDAQ stocks. Um, there's just some spacing issues. So I'll go ahead and change those now and we'll see what it looks like when we're done. Okay, so I've completed all of the formatting that I wanted to do here. We've got the new title, subtitle, all the um, formatting of the numbers, etc., the spacing and change the background colors in the Vision tooltip to match more closely to the underlying horizon chart as well. So you can see now that so these trends are really starting to jump out across the OECD regions and countries with these uh, spikes in the inflation rates and the dips around 2009, 2010. Um, we can see towards the end here, across many of the regions, countries, the inflation rates is really starting to jump up quite a lot, in some cases to highest they've been in well over 20 years. So just as a comparison, I copied the dashboard and I brought in the line chart that we started out originally with. And hopefully you'd agree there's quite a stark difference in terms of just being able to see the trends. You really have to look very close on these line charts to start to see where things are high or low relatively over that time frame. Whereas with the horizon chart, things really jump out quite quickly. And again, you can use the tooltip if you really want to look at the specific numbers and dates and so on. Okay, so I hope that's been useful in showing you how you can create a horizon chart using this template and copying over the calculations to your own workbook. Thanks for watching.